Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to know that regardless of what is said, regardless of how it is set up, regardless of what society believes, regardless of how our family think, regardless of how they call us in the neighborhood, listen, we can choose to be God's covenant people. What a powerful, powerful revelation that is. Listen, it's not about culture. It's not about race. It's not about where you come from. It's not about how much you got. It's not about what your pedigree is. Listen, it's all about what he says is all about what God says. What a powerful revelation that is for you and I today. And we are so grateful and so thankful and so blessed that you all are here with us today. And we are so grateful that we get an opportunity to invite you all, the covenant keepers, covenant seekers, those that seeking the man Christ Jesus, the body of Christ, the Ark of the Covenant Ministry family, invite you all with us at the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two, Story Time. And story time is biblically based original stories that shows godly principles lived out in someone's life. And we want you to know that we do this to encourage, we do this to inspire, we do this to lift up, we do this to give one an understanding, an enlightenment, that they be able to take that next step in Christ Jesus. And we are so thankful and grateful that God has called us to this ministry. Well, we want you also to know that we want you to be a part of this ministry and by way of sharing the videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want you to share the videos with your family, your friends, your loved ones. Share them with those that you're praying for, you're witnessing to. Share them with your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your mothers, your fathers, your grandparents. Listen, share them with your cousins, those that's in college, those that's in the armed forces. Share them with those that's going through trials and tribulation and testing, those that's in nursing homes, residential care, independent living, those that you work with. Share them with those those that your acquaintances, those that your next door neighbor. Listen, share them with your small group. Share them with your church family. Share, share, share the videos. And we want you also to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the ARK, A-R-K of O-F, the T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry. M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you'll see our symbol right here that says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And we want you to go through the different types of videos that's there. We got Bible study videos there. We got even our Christmas songs out there. We know they whack, but we have a lot of fun doing them. And if y'all encourage us, we'll do some this year as well. Listen, we also got our Covenant Seekers detective game there, mental and physical workout. We have biblical exercise. We even got one that me and my wife did a collaboration on entitled Prayer and Story Time, which is a powerful ministry that it was. And we even got different series that we done done different Bible studies that we have done. We in the process of a series right now. And we're going through the book of Ephesians. We did chapter one entitled Understanding and Understanding Part Two. We did chapter two entitled Grace. And now we got to do this Sunday at 11 o'clock and 1230 on YouTube entitled Strength. So we're doing it to chapter three, Ephesians three. So come on and worship with us. We want you, as you're going through the video, we want you to to let us know, give us a comment, let us know how the video illuminated in your life, how it 
the video affected you? How did the video help another as you shared the video? Also, if you got a comment you want to leave us about the next teaching that you want us to do, or if if you want us to bring back a particular thing that we're not doing right now, maybe you might, you might want us to bring back... Uh, the, the Covenant Seekers Detective Game, or even prayer and story time with me and my wife. Let us know. Leave it in the comment. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next video is uploaded. As you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And we want you all to go be able to continue and put your prayer requests in as well because we want to be praying for you and your families and your situations and circumstances as well as we so grateful that you all been praying for our family. We so grateful that you all have taken us to the throne of grace and has pr prayed down the precious blood of Jesus Christ over us and the and the power of the Spirit of God upon us. We want to thank you for being a refresher as you refreshed us, anointed us with oil to continue to be strengthened in this time as we facing some uh, medical adversities with our daughter. We are so grateful that you all have taken us to the throne of grace and taken Sister Nakia to the throne of grace. Oh, we're so thankful for that. We're so pleased for that. And we're going to be praying for you and your situation and households, all right? And we also got a special bulletin, special bulletin, special bulletin. Listen, don't take Christ out of Christmas. Don't take Christ out of his birthday. Don't take Christ out of his time for you to uplift him. Give honor where honor is due. When it comes to be your birthday time, oh, listen, you want all eyes on you. When it comes to be your anniversary time, all oh, how you want nobody to forget your anniversary. You don't want that husband or that wife to forget that anniversary. You want them to do something special for you. You want them to do something special for you on your birthday. It's some of you right now. It's not even talking to some people in your family because they didn't recognize your birthday. It's some of you even upset with your parents because they didn't get you what you wanted on your birthday. Uh, they didn't do something on your special day, your graduation, or uh, whatever the day was that was special to you. They didn't do what you wanted them to do. And right now, some of you are mad at one another. Some of you not even talking to others because of your special day and they didn't acknowledge you the way that you wanted to be acknowledged. Now, what about this particular day? What about this day that we honoring the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that we are honoring our Savior, the truth, the light, the way that we honoring the peace, we honoring the mighty counselor, God Almighty Himself. We honoring Him. So don't take Him out of Christmas. Don't be walking around talking about Xmas. Don't be walking around talking about Happy Holiday. Don't be walking around talking about it's the season and all of this here, goodwill toward men and all of this here. But the Bible lets us know that it's goodwill toward toward men who God loves, who God, who loves the Lord. It's all about the man Christ Jesus. It's all about him. And we want to keep him in the holiday, in the day that we celebrate. It's his birthday. Listen, have a gift for God. Listen, in other words, get to get him a cake and say happy birthday Jesus in your holiday celebration that you're doing. Recognize Jesus Christ first. Don't just stand there and just say a few words in prayer. Come with a gift. Come with saying, Lord, 
I got something for you. Because God only wants one thing. He always only wanted one thing. His heart was set in one place. The Bible says that God wished that no man shall perish, but that all shall come into repentance. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen, he always wanted you. So when come before Jesus Christ and give him what he wanted. Give him what he went to the cross for. Let him know, listen, Lord, I'm dedicating my life unto you. I'm dedicating this time unto you. I'm dedicating myself to this ministry with my talents and gifts to build the kingdom of God. I'm dedicating the time that I'm going to make a prayer, praying for these people right here, Lord, for their salvation. Come and give God a gift of yourself. Come and do that. All right. And we also want to be hollering out at our friends at Spotify uh, 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 to find us. If y'all can find us on Spotify podcast, let us know Ark of the Covenant Ministry and you'll see our symbol right here. And if you can find it, let us know. Please let us know. If you can't find it, let us know because I don't know. I, I tried to go there and it was all different to me, so I couldn't find it. I'm so sorry. But let me know what I'm doing wrong if I need to change something because I didn't have no premium account or nothing like that. I just uploaded stuff on there. So let me know what I'm doing wrong. All right. Thank you. And we... Uh, uh, um, I got a, a, a inspiration, a, 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 a declaration, or I got a word from another chaplain that 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 called and uh, was concerned and wanted to know how I was doing and all of this here stuff. But they wanted me <laughs> to ask me a question, so I'm gonna put it before my people here. And because they 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 was concerned that we didn't would wouldn't able to do it or we wouldn't doing it or something, how can all of us be able to come together over the telephone, you know, like a conference call where you have a number you can call in. So let me know what you think about that. Maybe I might want to do it on Sunday morning worship where we all can call in and y'all can listen to the to, to the service that's going on and, and watch it over the air at the same time as you in the service do, doing that. So maybe so, but let me know what you think all right okay all right get your coffee get your water get your tea get your soda pop get you a danish or two get you some popcorn potato chips, get the grandkids and set them all down around you. Get your nieces and nephews and set them all down. Get mama and daddy. Get your get your wife or your husband uh, uh, or your husband. Y'all come on and get together as I invite you all to right now to the Art of the Covenant Ministry number two story time. And this one is entitled be who he says. Be who he says. All right. This is a story that revolves around a young man. Now, this young man has grown up. This young man has grown up, and, and right now he's in the folds, in the tossed and turning of life. Right now, he's in situations and circumstances that he doesn't realize that has come to overwhelm him, that has come to destroy him, that has come to tear him down, that has come to shape and mold him in such a way that he becomes on a slippery slope. This young man is in... a uh, facing right now situations and circumstances that's going to pull him in direction that he doesn't even realize. Right now, this young man is holding on to some of the things of the past. 
You see, right now, he holding on to some things that he feels that has been filling the void in his life, that has been strengthening him, that has helped shape and mold him, that has gave him comfort and, and peace, that has gave him understanding, has gave him a place in life. You see, right now, he's holding on to something that he has been feeding on, something that he has been taking and, and has been living out, has been shaping and molding him into a, such a way that he's right now facing uh, situations and circumstances that has him blinded, and he believes that he's going toward the light. You see, he's in a situation and circumstances that he believes is calling him that particular way. That he can hear it calling him. He can hear it telling him to come, to come, to come. You see, here's a young man that right now he he wants to be what he used to be. He's, here's a young man, he wants that same feeling that he used to have. Here's a young man, he wants that same position that he used to have. He wants to go back to, and bring that forward until today. You see, here's a young man that's going through some situations and circumstances. But he don't know the end of the road. He don't know what was going to happen. Only thing he knows is what he wants out of it. You see, the only thing he, he knows that he knows the type of thing that the way he used to feel. He, he remember how it put him in the right position. It, it, it kept him in the place where he could feed off of the situation and circumstance. You see... The young man is facing situation that has reared up and is calling him, come, come, come. And he don't know where the voices is coming from. He don't know what's driving him. He don't know what's pulling at him. He don't know what's pushing him. But he wants to take the step. He wants to grab hold to it. He wants to go where it's calling him because he wants that feeling. He wants that void to be filled with that. He wants that love that, love that he thinks he feels. He wants it all. He wants it. And it's calling him, come, come, come. And before he gets up out the chair, before he gets up and going to make a decision about what he's doing, he begins to reflect. He begins to think. He begins to reflect on how it made him feel when he was a little lad, how it changed his life, how it caused him to be able to even manipulate other people with it, how it made him be able to change the atmosphere, how he was able to get the focus, how he was able to have the what he was thriving for, how he was able to feed off of it. He begins. To reflect. And as he begins to reflect, the young man begins to picture his life way back then. He begins to think and he remembers the household that he grew up in. You see, he grew up in a household where his mother and father wasn't really mother and father. You see, he grew up in the household that he was in, that he was brought to this particular household because he was put into the system and he was uh, brought into this household. They had come and got him. They had come and chosen him. They had come and told the people that they wanted him and they had brought him into the household. And while he was in that particular household, he begins to see see and begins to hear and begins to develop. You see, they brought him into the household and they brought him in at, at a very young age. You see, he was an infant 
when he came to this particular household unknowing to him that this was in mama and daddy as an infant but they began to nurture him they began to feed him and he begins to grow now as they was was feeding him as they was giving him the medicine that he need as they was giving him the bottle that he needed as they changed him as they did all this to him there was some things that they didn't do. But he still was growing. You see, he was he got bigger and bigger to a place where he became a toddler and he was able to pull himself up off the floor and they would sit there and watch him. They would sit there and watch him as he goes and tries to stand up wobbly and shaking and, and carrying on. And they would just sit there and watch him as he go back down on the ground, pull himself back up, back down on the ground, pull himself back up. And they would just sit and watch him. And when, him, when it came time for feeding, they would feed him. When it came time for changing his clothes, they changed him. When it came time to put him in the bed, they put him in the bed. When it came time to get him up in the morning, they got him up. When it came time for them to put him in the playpen, they put him in the playpen. They did those things that was needed to be done. But there were some things that they didn't do. But he still grew. You see, he still grew and got older. And as he got older, and around about the age of four and five is when he could remember back then. See, he could remember having the bicycle. He could remember uh, having little toys that he played with. He could remember even the television that he used to watch. And he remembered how when he was five and six years old, how he knew how to turn it on and watch what he wanted to watch. He remembered the food that they prepared for him in the morning as they gave him his favorite cereal some mornings. And he remembered the orange juice that he used to drink every morning because he loved orange juice. He remembered that. He remembered the clothes that he used to wear and all of that. He remembered the times that he got up and the times that he went to bed. But there were some things that he remembered that he didn't get. You see, as he got older, able to seven and eight years old, he used to go outside and play in front of the house and all of this here stuff. He remembers some of the other kids that lived down the block would sometimes come down and play with him in front of his house and sometimes his mother and his father would go down to other people's houses on the block and they would take him and he was able to play with some of the kids in the neighborhood and all of this here. He remembered how it made him feel when he was able to play with others. He remembered how it made him feel when he was able to bring a toy that the others ones didn't have and they would want to play with his toys. They would want to be around him. They would want to look up to him and, and how he could manipulate the fun time by using his toy and taking it back when he wanted to take it back if they didn't do it the way he wanted them to do it. He would take his toy back and wouldn't allow them to play with it. You see, he remembered those days. He remembered those days when some, the, the time that he fell off the porch at the age of eight years old. He remembered falling off that porch because he was doing something and, and that he wasn't supposed to do. He done climbed up on the rail of the thing and he ends up falling off. And he remembered how they took him to the hospital. He remembered the lights and the sounds. He re he remembered the, the nurses coming in and looking at him and saying, oh, you're such a precious little fellow. He remembered how they come in and told him how special he was. He remembered how they came in and, and, and touched his arm and, and, and looked at his arm. He remembered how they gave him all of this attention. He remembered how everybody would come in and look at him and smile and ask him, how you doing? How you feeling? And how 
how you doing? He remembered when he had to go to x-ray and get his arm x-rayed, how the people in the x-ray treated him so nicely and talked about him so nicely and, and, and just tended to his need. He even remembered how he got some candy from the x-ray technician's office because she wouldn't pay an attention and the candy was over there on top of the desk. And they were talking to his mother and his father and he went over there and got a piece of it and put it in his pocket. He remembered that when he was eight years old. He remembered when they put that cast on his arm and after they put the cast on, he remembered that the doctor signed his name on it and, all, and, and he remembered how the nurse came in and signed, his, signed her name on it. Oh, he remembered when he got back in the neighborhood how all the people, the, the, the kids in the neighborhood wanted to come and talk to him and ask him what happened, how you do that, and can I sign your cast and all that. How how they treated him, how some of the neighborhood people in the neighborhood brought him little stuff over and told him that it was came from their mama's them house and their mama them told him to bring this to him. Oh, he remembered how they all would come out and see him sitting out there and they would come over there and sit and talk with him and play with some of his toys because he didn't have but that one arm and his, and his mother and father didn't want him to go far with that cast on They wanted to watch him. So he had to stay around the house and he and they would come over and play with his toys and all this here and he could direct it and guide it. He remembered how they came over and wanted to touch the cast and feel the cast. They how they asked him how did they do it? What did they do to him? He remembered all of the attention that he was getting. Oh, he remembered that. He remembered at nine years old, that there was a family that moved across the street. He remembered that he saw the family move in. He, he saw the mother, the father, the daughter, and the son move in. He saw them empty out the big old truck that they had. He saw them carry men carrying the stuff in the house. He saw the people standing out there on the yard. Some of the day was talking to him. He saw even his father went over there and talked to the to, to the father, and they talked and laughed and giggled for a while, and he come on back across the street. He even remembered how the father and his father became pretty good friends, how they would work on each other's cars and sit out in the garage and sit and talk. He remembered all of that. But most of all, he remembered the young man. See, he remembered their son because when his son went in that house, you didn't see his son much. Every now and then, you would see the son. You didn't see him outside much playing with the toys. You didn't see him outside much standing around. You didn't see him at Northern Neighbor's house. You didn't even see him come out in the morning. You didn't see him come out in the afternoon. You didn't see him coming back. You didn't see the young man hardly ever. You didn't see him. You couldn't recognize what was going on? He couldn't understand. What, where's, the, where's the young man? How come the young man don't come out and play with us? Because he noticed that the young man looked at around his age. But still, he didn't see him. But he remembered when he was 11 and 12 years old, he still hadn't seen the young man that much. But he remembered all of the people that was going into the house and out of the house. On a daily basis, going in, coming out, going in and coming out. But the times he did see the young man, the times that he, he saw the young man around, he saw all the attention that the young man was getting from his mother and his father and his sister, how they watched diligently over the young man, how they paid much attention to him, how others in the neighborhood that would come out and they would see him, the, the adults would come out, how they showed him much attention, much love, much hugging, much 
patting on the head, much staring at him, watching every move that he made. All oh, he remembered. He remembered how the young man would be sitting out there and some of the kids would go over there to play with him. And they, But they played the way that he wanted to play. They did the things that he wanted them to do. They did it the way he wanted them to do it. He remembered that. He even remembered when he went over there and he was talking with the the young fella and and playing with the young fella that he had to do it his particular way. His parents was like hawks watching over him. All the neighbors was like hawks watching over him. So you had to do it the way this young man was doing it. It wasn't a lot of rough housing. It, it wasn't a lot of pushing and playing and all of this type of stuff. He was more fragile. He was more delicate than that. So they watched him closely. But he also watched all the attention that this young fellow was getting. He watched it. And he would go back home and he would go home when it was time for him to eat lunch or when it was time for him to eat dinner or it was time for him just to come in the house. And he remember going and sitting in front of the TV. If he had homework, going and do the homework and come back sitting in front of the TV. He remember his mother and father in their room. And he would be sitting out there all alone. See, he remember coming home from school, and most of the time when he came home from school, there might have been a sandwich fix already on the table for him. He remember his father working and going to work constantly all the time. He remember his mother being at home, and she would already have a sandwich or something fixed for him. If it wasn't a sandwich fix, she would yell from the room, go ahead and fix you a sandwich that you don't come home. Dinner going to be ready at such to such a time. Oh, he remembered that at around the age of 11 and 12 years old. You see, he remembered how he would spend most of his time by himself. He remembered that. But he also remembered that young man across the street. You see, one day he saw that young man again and his mother and father was out there and they, they had him out there and he was out there and he was sitting and, 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 was, and was sitting there playing on a little, a, a little iPad or something and he went on out and he went on over there and he sat down with the young man. He was talking to the young man and his mother and father were sitting up on high, sitting on the benches just watching the young man. And he looked at the young man and the young man looked so frail that the young man looked so tired that the young man looked at so weak but that the young man had a countenance on him that he was joyous and he he was he was full of happiness all the time and he asked him he said is something wrong with you and the young man looked at him and, and just smiled he said well i do have some medical conditions he said but besides all that i'm all good And he sat there playing on his iPad and asked the young man, did he want to play some chess? And the young man told him he don't know how to play chess. So he said, I'm going to teach you so I can have somebody to play with. He said, well, okay. So he, he, he looked at his mother and father and asked him, can he bring his chess board out? His mother and father told him, yeah, and they brought a little table out and he set the chess board up and he set the chess pieces up and he began to tell the young man about this piece and about that piece and about that piece and how the pieces move. So he was listening to him and he was trying to understand how the game is played. But most of the thing he was focusing on was the attention that the young man was receiving. That his mother and father was always asking him, is he all right? How you feel? Do you need anything? Do you want anything? Can we get your friend anything? Do you want a pillow to sit on? Do you want me to bring a chair out? Do what, asking him what he needs and always 
trying to meet all of his needs, trying to meet all of his comfort. Oh, he was focused on that as the young man was telling him about the chest. And they sat there for a few hours as they began to play and, and move pieces around. And, and the young man was learning a little bit. And for several times when he saw that fella out there, they would always sit down and he would bring the chessboard out and they would begin to move pieces and he began to show them as he learned a little more and more. But he mainly focused on the attention that this young fellow was getting. And he realized in his mind why he was getting such attention. You see, he realized that the attention that he was getting was simply because of his physical condition. You see, he realized that because of this young man's medical illness that the young man told him is the reason that the attention was there. It was the reason that people were paying close attention to him, that, that they were being watchful over him. It's because that he was so frail, he was so weak, he was so tired because of his medical condition. So when the young man realized it and went back home, he tried something that very next day when he woke up, because he's thriving for something, he's looking for something. There was something missing in his life that he saw that he wanted, he, that, that he needed, and he began to understand how to feel this boy. He woke up that morning and he began to cough. He began to cough hard when he woke up that morning. See, usually when he wake up in the morning, his mother is not up with him. His mother is still in the bed. His father is already gone to work. All he had to do was fix his cereal in the morning and get him a banana or orange and, and get his famous orange juice and go on to school because he walked to school and it wasn't that far from the house. But he woke up that morning and he began to call. You see, he began to cough in his room first, and then he started coughing going down the hallway. And then he started coughing in the bathroom, because the bathroom is right next door to his mama's and daddy's room. And he did wake his mama and his mama up and she could hear him coughing. And while he was in that bathroom, he heard a knock at the door. And he said, yes. And his mama said, are you all right, baby? He said, I got cough, mama. And he coughing and coughing. And it, she said, when you come out of there, I'm going to be in the kitchen. She said, come on to the kitchen so I can look at you. And she, he come on out of there. He coughing and can on. He done took a hot towel, you see, and heated heated it up in the hot water and put it all on his face and can on. Kept holding it on his face and on his head and all of that stuff. So when he came out of there, his mama come and looked at him and, and he coughing and can on and she feeling on him and can on. She told him, well, you feel a little warm. And she not only hugged, it felt on his face and head. She hugged him. She wanted to feel if his body was hot or anything. She said, well, you don't feel too hot in your body, but your head and face is a little warm, and you're coughing and can on, baby. You're all right. So mama said, listen, I'm going to call the school, and you're not going to go to school today. I want you to stay home in the bed, and I'm going to you stay home. And then when she stayed home in the bed, his, his, his mama went in there and there was an extra TV that they had, but they hadn't put no TV in his room. He didn't have a television in his room. But that day she went and got the TV and plugged it up in his room and carried on and said, now you can lay in here and watch the TV. She said, I'm going to be checking on you. We're not going to close your door. We're going to leave this door open so I can be able to hear and listen out for you and carry on. And his mama got on up and went on and got her cup of coffee, got herself together and stayed on up. Every now and then while he was laying in that room, he would cough. 
<coughs> and when he would cough, his mama would come in there. Baby, you all right. You want something? Are you hungry? Do you need anything? All oh, he realized that this was the what he needed. This is what he wanted. This is, made him feel good. This made him feel a part of being loved. This made him feel that he was special in someone's life. This made him feel that he was somebody that's supposed to be here. This start filling up the void that he had in his life. You see, he had that attention that he was looking for. He had that feeling that he wanted. Oh, did he love it? Oh, he was so thankful and so grateful. As he did that for the next two days. Afterwards, he quit doing doing it for those two days. He 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 gotten better, and after a while, he continued to figure out other little things that would cause them to be attentional to him. Because he said he even noticed and remembered that when he did the coughing spell that when his father came in from work, his father came straight to his room and checked on him. He said, I hear you're a little sick. He would tell his father, yeah, just a little bit. His father would sit there and look at him and say, anything that you want me to get for you, anything you want me to do, and rub his head and stroke him down a little bit while he's sitting there looking at him. Carrying on, no, I'm okay, Daddy. I'm okay. All oh, how that filled the inside of him. All oh, how that made him feel so good. All oh, how that made him feel he had a place in life. All oh, how that made him feel so much better. And then he began to come up with different things come up with different schemes, come up with different things that he can control and, and receive this constant attention, receive this constant nurturing, receive this constant looking upon, touching from his family, receive all of this as he began to grow. He began to get older and older, but he wanted this attention. He wanted this here. He even transformed his whole self into different situations and circumstances so he could constantly receive this attention. Because after a while, pretty soon, his mother and his father, you know, they would take him to the doctor and the doctor couldn't find really what was wrong with this young lad and some of the things that he was portraying. Some of the things that he was saying, how he would have a headache and, and all of this here, and they couldn't figure out why he was having these headaches, and they just told him that he was having some migraines and things like that. He figured it out that he, when he looked it up on the internet that he could have these headaches and, and these migraines that would cripple you for days and days and all of this here, so he played on that situation, and when he would have these fake headaches, he remember how his mama would come back and forth to the room and looking at him as he done shut the TV off and cut the lights off in the house and just lay there curled up in the bed and he could hear his mama come back and forth every now and then set some orange juice on the table, set a sandwich or something on the table with some cookies and all of this here stroke his head while he turned over and and got his eyes closed, he sat down on the side of the bed and rub his head and rub his back and all of this here. And how he and he just feed on that. It made him feel important. It made him feel like a person. It made him feel like they loved him. It made him feel like he belonged. And he continued to want this. He continued to desire this. He continued to look for this. Even he got attention when he went to school because he would miss two or three days out of school. And all the other kids would ask him, is he all right? Is everything okay with him? And some of the teachers would change the way they talk to him. They would change the way they would treat him. They would change the way that they would pay attention to him. They was always watching over him. They was always being attentive to his every move. They was always being understanding. They was always looking in his direction and he 
fed on that. He loved that. It gave him a sense of being. It gave him a sense of belonging. It's, he remembered that it gave him what he needed. And he fed upon it. He thrived upon it. He remembered even on graduation day. He remembered that he didn't even go to his high school graduation. He didn't go to his high school graduation because he had devised a plan in his head. You see, the day before graduation, he didn't even show up to a gathering that the seniors were having. They found out that he was at home in the bed again with one of these migraines. Oh, he remembered how a lot of them came by the house checking on him, how they come by the house and he could hear them at the front door and he could hear his mother telling him, no, he's, he, he's not doing well today, so he's not receiving any company. And they would ask him, is he coming to graduation? Is he going to be at graduation? And she would tell him, I don't know. And he played that sickness until on, even on the graduation day. He didn't even go to graduation. You know, most of the kids at the school had broke put together cards and had put together little things for him because he wasn't at graduation. His mom and them received his diploma and all of this here and they would all come back there. Most of them came by the house. Even mama even let some of them back there to the room and he could, he just wave his hand at them when they come back there laying down the cards, laying down the little stuff that they had for him, laying it down on the dresser and stuff and, and he would just wave his hand and keep balled up looking the other way and and he could hear them all say well we hope you get better we hope you get better we 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 love you we love you and he was thriving on that it made him feel so good it made him feel that he was a part of their life it made him feel alive it made him feel electrical it just shot through his body and he was so hungry because he didn't get that attention from his family. You see, he didn't get that attention unless he was in a sick mode. See, he didn't get that touching. He didn't get those words that I love you. He didn't get no hug. He didn't get nobody paying attention to him. You see, he didn't get nobody that he felt that cared about him unless he was sick. It changed the whole dynamic of the house. It changed the whole atmosphere of the house. See, his father never sat down and talked to him when he was coming up. His father never held him held him and told him that he loved him. His father never spent much time with him. His father would get off work, maybe go in the garage and do a few things and own the bed. His mother would go and she would take care of the dinner. She would clean the house, wash the clothes, change his sheets, did all of that, made sure there was food in the house and all of that. But she never hugged him. She never held on to him. She never told him that she loved him. She never patted him on the back. She never sat and talked to him. She didn't do none of that. And he was thriving forward. He wanted it. And he saw it in the young man across the street. You know, when he got ready to graduate, the young man across the street was still receiving uh, care. He was still having people coming in and out the house. But by this time, the young man was in a wheelchair. The young man was very weak. But they were still playing chess together. They were still spending some time together. As a matter of fact, he even had gotten pretty good in the chess game. He pretty much loved it. You know, the young man... Went back home after he went over there and stayed a little while on the chess game. And when he came in the house, he heard his mama call his name. She said, Andre? He said, yes, mama. How you doing? He said, I'm doing fine, mama. I'm doing okay. 
She said, I don't want you out there outside too much. She said, there's too much sun out there. I want you to stay in the house now. Get you some rest. The air's on. You want me to get up and fix you something? He said, no, Mom, I'm fine. She said, no, I'm going to get up and make you something here. I'm going to fix you something to munch on. And you sit down and watch the TV. You got the air on. I'm going to get you a big cold glass of orange juice. You sit on down. I'm going to fix you something. Oh, it made him feel so good that she was attentive to him. And he would get that attention from her. She was trying to prevent him from having those days of sickness upon him. And she was very attentive now to his situation, attentive to where he is. She was now attentive to what he was doing and how he was doing and when he was doing. Because he would even added some stuff on to his headaches. He even added that he had to, he was having a little chest pains every now and then. He even added on to it that he that his neck would be hurting or something and all of this here stuff. So they was very watchful over him after that. You know, he had graduated from school and after he done graduated, he determined that he wanted to uh, get him a, a good trade or something so he can get him a good job. But you know, his mom and them was kind of concerned that he was going to go to college, try, that they was concerned that he was going to be away from them and he would might get sick or something. They didn't know what to think about this college thing. They didn't, they didn't know how to think about it or anything like that. And they, you know, they even talked to the doctor about it and what about all these migraines and, and all this pain that he having here and there. But the doctor, you know, he was kind of saying that, you know, we understand the migraines. We don't really understand some of the stuff that he's saying because it wasn't anything medical that they could find or anything like that. And it, so they, they, they didn't really give them the answers that they wanted. But as a concerned mother and a concerned father, they didn't want him to go to college. They didn't want him to go to a certain area. As a matter of fact, they even filed for the young man's disability. You know, he was being treated for of course the migraines and he did, he did have a slight blood pressure problem and that was about it that there was medically that they was doing for him but you know they ended up receiving disability for the young man and the young man he still wanted to go or oh, Andre still wanted to go and go to school he wanted to get him a trade he wanted to do some things in his life but his mama and them was like a hawk over him no you can't do this but he convinced his mama to let him go to the trade school that which is in too far that he could take a couple of days of classes and all of this so he did and of course, like his father, you know, the, 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 you know, the man that was there in the house, he, they always tinkered with cars. So that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to be a part of that because his father had started spending time with him in the garage. His his father had started taking him everywhere he went. When he went in, when he got off work, he was always with with him, watching over him, uh, making sure that he was okay. He, he was spending time with him in the garage and taught him some things about cards. So he began to like to work on cards. So he wanted to go to the school and learn about cards, for which he did. He learned about them and he liked it. He got pretty good at fixing on cards. He even got a, a, all the certifications he got and all that stuff there. And he was loving it. And, you know, he was getting his little disability, staying in his mama's them house, and they watching over him and carrying on. Hey, until he met a young lady. Now he met this young lady, and he ended up kind of liking this young lady. Now the young lady, being a little bit different from him, she wasn't a mechanic or anything like that, but she was in the medical profession. You see, she was a CNA, and he liked it her because he used to see her all the time at the bus stop. So he finally got him enough nerve up and talked to her, and they became good friends. 
even became friends where he wanted to take her out to, to different places and all of this stuff and all of that. You know, after he started working in Canon, after you know, after he graduated from mechanic school, he got him a little part-time job, he ended up getting him a car. And all of this here stuff. So he was able to take her different places. They was able to do things together and all of this here. And he remembered the things that his mama them used to say when he came back home. Baby, now you know you're disabled and, you, and you're sickly. You don't need to be out there that late. You don't need to be doing what you're doing. You need to rest a little bit more now. You need to, you need to sit down. You need to calm down some. You need to not go out so many days a week. You need to be, to be here. Just, you know, relax yourself and all of this here. You're such a sickly young man. They would tell him. And he would just smile and thrive on the attention that he was getting. But he was liking this young lady. Now the young lady was a little different because see the young lady had a different foundation. The young lady had a different belief. The young lady had a different outlook on life. You see the young lady knew who she was. She knew where she came from and she knew she had a purpose in life. See, the young lady had a driving motive. She had a uplifting outlook. She had a strength that he couldn't recognize. He, she had a countenance that looked much, much different than what he thought of. See, she had thoughts that was in a different place. She had words that come from a different place. She had actions that come from a different style than he was. You see, this young lady was a strong believer in the man Christ Jesus. You see, she would take him to church with her. She would take him to different outings at the church. They did a lot of things together, but they did a lot of things that was focused around the man of Christ Jesus. And she would tell some of the people that was around him the things that his mother had told her. You see, his mother didn't really like her. His mother didn't really care for her. His mother didn't really want him to be around her because she felt that she was taking him out too much. She felt that she wasn't able to watch over him. She felt that she wouldn't be an attentive enough to her son because he was so sickly. He was such a sickly young man and and she didn't feel that this young lady was going to take care of him the way that he was supposed to be taken care of. But the boy grew in his caring for the young lady. He began to even realize that he loved the young lady. As he continued to work and, 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 and those few days and, and as he continued to be around this young lady, as, as she continued to grow in her education, you know, she went from a CNA to a QMA, a qualified medical assistant, and she a medical assistant, and then she became an LPN, and they still dating. She's still taking him to church. She's still taking him around uh, all of her people that she be around that's centered around the man Christ Jesus, and the mother's dislike grew for this young lady because she could see the transformation that she was having on her son. She could see the difference in her son around Around this young lady. She could see the difference in what this young lady was saying to her son and the different than what she was saying to her son. She could even hear her son talk talking to his mother differently, talking to his father differently. He's talking about the man Christ Jesus. He's reading about the man Christ Jesus. He's watching the man the stories on the man Christ Jesus. He's listening to preaching about the man Christ Jesus. And his mother didn't like the transformation. His mother didn't like it because she knew that this woman would not take care of her son. That his, her son was a sickly young man. You know, he began to be transformed. He began to be different. In this particular day, as a young man sitting in the chair, 
as the young man is sitting there, he began to think about the next step that he's going to have to take. You see, <clears throat> he had grown in his heart for much love for the young lady. But he had grown in his heart for much love of the man Christ Jesus. He was still at his mama's house, but he's sitting out in front of his mama's, on the porch. And in his mind, he wanted to ask the woman to marry him. Now he was sitting there thinking about it <clears throat> and pondering on it. But he no longer wanted those words that his mama would call him. See, he wanted no longer to be identified by those words. And the step that he got to make, he got to go in here and apologize to his mama and to his daddy. He got to tell him the truth about who he is and what is going on. You see, he want to go in here and clean the slate. He want to go in here and, and, and tell his mama and, and daddy what's been going on and, and what the transformation has done for him. He wanted to go in and ask for forgiveness of all the different manipulations that he had done, of all the lying that he had done, of all the things that he had done to gather this attention, to gather this watchful moments over him to gather the touching, the hugging, to gather the words that I love you. He wanted to tell him all the things that he had done. And he was now sitting in the chair and he was ready to get up and make that next step. While he was sitting there listening to the radio, he heard the preacher on the radio say, Listen, God is calling us unto repentance. So you see, God wants us to turn from our ways and turn to the ways of Jesus Christ. He said, you see, that God wants us to recognize our, our sins in our life. He wants us to be remorseful for them. And after that, he wants us to confess it unto him. He wants us to build back the relationship that is separating us from God when we have sin in our lives. He said, God is calling us to holiness. And he sat there in that chair and he knew that he had to take the next step. He got up and went on in the house and his mother and father was sitting at the D dining room table and, and father was eating and, and, and mama when she saw him come in she said baby you hungry you want you want, you want me to fix you a plate baby why don't you come and sit down here I'm going to fix you a plate and get you some orange juice and, and, and you sit on down right here with your daddy and eat, 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 eat with your daddy and he said mama I want you to sit down just sit down Mama sat down and he come and sat down there with mama and daddy and he looked them both in the eyes and he began to confess how he manipulated the situations, how he never had a headache, how he never had back pains or neck pains, how he never had chest pains, how his vision never got blurry. And while he was doing it, he wanted them to know because he wanted the love, he wanted the attention, he wanted the touching. He began to confess everything to him as he watched the tears roll down his mama's face. And his mama just couldn't say but anything that she was sorry as well. His father had got a little angry in the beginning, but as his father listened to him tell it, his father quit eating and just sat back in the chair looking at his son. Realizing that his son was yearning for something that he had yearned for all of his life. You see, his father's father didn't show him much attention. His father's father, he couldn't remember when his father told him that he loved him. He couldn't remember the times that his father ever hugged him. He couldn't remember the time that his father ever spent with him. He couldn't remember the times where his father ever took him out for ice cream or a hamburger. He couldn't remember none of that about his father. And he's listening 
to his son, telling him that he became that same father. And then he began to tell him how he'd been transformed, how Jesus Christ has changed his life, how he wanted to come and tell them about the things that he had done, how he wanted to confess to them about his sins, that he had done this to them, how, how he wanted their forgiveness because he has already got forgiveness for God. And he began to expound on the gospel of Jesus Christ to them as they both sat there. Even saw tears swell up in his father's eyes. He told them about the virgin birth, the life of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ. He told them about the Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for us. He told us how wherefore by that we while we were yet sinners, that Christ had died for us. He told them about how one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. He told them about how Jesus Christ was that what that New Testament that Jesus Christ has nailed us to the cross, that Jesus Christ has nailed our sins to the cross, and Jesus Christ had died on that cross and cried out before he died that it was finished, that the law of the payment of the law was done. And they took his body down, put it in a tomb, and three days later he rose up and he ascended up on high sitting by the right hand of the Father, making prayers for them as well as him. Oh, Andre looked at his father and told him, he said, you can believe it and take it by faith. He said, if you can believe it and take it by faith and turn from your ways and turn to the ways of Jesus Christ. In other words, he said, I want you to repent, Daddy. I want you to repent, not for me, Daddy. I want you to repent for your refreshing and for your forgiveness of sins by the man Christ Jesus. He said, I want you to repent. And then when you do that, I want you to cry out unto the Lord, his father, with tears still swelling up in his eyes. His mother with tears in her eyes as she has wrenched over and grabbed her son's hand. And right there at that dinner table, they cried out unto the Lord. And once they said the prayer, after they repeated out to him, and they said the prayer, he said, now, Mama, he, he said, I, I want us to all come together and study the Bible and read the Bible together. He said, and, and, and I want the Lord to lead y'all to a sin-hating Bible preaching church. He told him, he said, I want you to come to my church and see how you like it, the church that I go to. And pretty soon there was a knock at the door. The, he gets up, Andre, and goes to the door. And there she goes. Sarah was right at the door, the young lady. He invited her in and she come on in. And she could see that his mother and father had been crying. He could see the tears in their eyes. He could see the smile on their mouth, though, but the tears was in, our, in their eyes, and he could see the, the, the joy in his face and the tear that was in his eyes. And she, she looked and she said, what's going on? Everybody's smiling, but you all crying. What's going on? Oh, I looked at her and told her, he said, my mama and daddy has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Sarah was so happy. The mother looked at Sarah and she began to even cry a little more. She said, I'm so sorry. She said, I'm so sorry and I'm asking you for your forgiveness. She said, I, I, I had a dislike for you. I, she said, I, I didn't care for you around my son. I, I didn't like for you to, to be around my son. I didn't want you around my son. She said, I didn't like the idea how you was changing him. I didn't like the idea how you was taking him out all the time. She said, I didn't like the idea that you might not be able to take care of my son. But she said, you took care of him better than I did. She said, you watched over him better than I could have. She said, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. Oh, Sarah, with tears rolling down her eyes, 
son and his mother embrace. Now the moment she, they quit embracing, old Andre had looked at his father and his father had looked at him in his eyes and he saw something a little different in his eyes and he showed his father the box. His father just ran on back in the chair. As soon as they quit embracing, he went over and he looked at Sarah and he held her by the hand. And he told Sarah how very much important she was to him and how grateful and thankful that she had come into his life and all the things that she had brought into his life, especially the man Christ Jesus. And he said, because of God has given me the grace of you, that God has given me the presence of you, and God has given me him through you, he said, I want you to know that I love you and I love you very much. And he said, I want to love you to the end of my days. He got out on one knee. Oh, his mama screamed. His daddy just ran back there in the chair and smiled as he asked old Sarah to marry him. Sarah smiled and told him, I do. The very next day, he went on down to that job and asked him if he if he can get more time. They said, you can get as much time here as you want. He said, we got plenty of business here. We've been <clears throat> waiting on you to want more time. They gave him more time. And when they gave him the more time, he went on down to the Social Security office and told him, well, he got a permanent job now, and he don't need the disability any longer. So they stopped his disability, and he went on and began to work. And he worked hard. And he worked long at that shop. You know, the shop was privately owned. And he, Andre, was one of the best mechanics that they had ever seen. He was constantly getting more education when he came down to the automotive cars and the new technology that was coming out. He had upgraded the shop because of his knowledge. They were able to take on different types of cars and all. The shop began to grow and he, he became the manager and all of this here. You know, even the owner even brought him in as the vice president of the company and all of this here uh, of the shop and he did everything. He upgraded it and all and even helped train the new mechanics that came in. You know, at the time that the company, the, the shop was ready, the, the owners was wondering what they was going to do with the shop because they never had children. You know, the man and wife, they never had children and they were, they, they were ready to get rid of that old shop, you know. They even signed the papers for old Andre to have the shop for himself. They signed the papers and helped him get the loan that he could get to pay them for the shop. And old Andre worked and owned that shop and did great wonders at the church as he mentored the men, as he mentored the young people, as he even hired some of them in the shop. All his wife and his mother and father, they all became good friends. And even at their passing, it was a great and joyous reception because they had walked in the Lord from that day on. Oh, it was a wonderful thing. And those two, Andre and Sarah, spent the next 42 years together. You know, at old Sarah's passing, there was some tears, there was some sorrows, there was some heartaches. But when old Andre came up to the casket looking down on his wife, these words had come across his lip. I can be who he said. I am, and I'm so thankful that you taught me who he calls me. And everybody just sat in silence as a tear fell from his eyes, and he bent over and kissed his wife goodbye. 
he went on and sat back down and the preacher preached a sermon. And he told the people, the people can call you everything. People can think you about you any kind of way they want. People can do whatever they want to do and how they want to do. But listen, if you don't want to miss one thing, you want this one thing said to you at the end of your time because you want to be known and be understood by one, the man Christ Jesus. You want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you know those words will be unto you because you are what he calls you, a servant of the Most High God, that you are an heir to the throne of grace, that you are ambassador of Christ Jesus, that you are his and he is yours. This is our story today. Well, we want to thank you all for being here today. We're so grateful that you all are here today. We're so appreciative that you all are here with us today. And we want you to know that we want you to be a part of this ministry by sharing the video. Share it with your family, your friends, your loved ones. Share it with those that you're witnessing to, those that's going through trials and tribulations, those that's having different difficulties but spiritual attacks. Listen, share them with your your co-workers, share them with those in your small group, share them with those that you know that's in hospitals, residential care, independent living, nursing home, share them with your nieces, your nephews, your aunties, your cousins, share, share, share the videos, and then we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the ARK, A-R-K, of O-F, the T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you'll see our symbol right here that says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And then we want you to go ahead and go through the videos, Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let us know what the video illuminated in your life. When you share the video, how it helped another. Listen, even put us a comment down if you want us to give you some prayer. Even also, you can give us a comment if there's a, a teaching that you want us to do. Leave us a comment. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button so you'll know when the next video is uploaded. And we want you to know that we are so thankful that you all been praying for us, that you've been lifting us up, taking us to the throne of grace, that you are anointing us with the refreshing from God as we, you pray that the spirit of the Lord strengthen us, that the blood of Jesus Christ covers us. We are so grateful and thankful that you have lifted up uh, my daughter Nakia and put her on the throne of grace as she's going through her medical difficulties right now. And and we're so grateful that y'all took us to the throne of grace to strengthen us to for us to continue in the ways of Jesus Christ through this situation and circumstance. We're so grateful. And remember, don't take Christ out of Christmas. It's his day. Listen, it's his time to be honored. It's his time to be lifted up. It's his time to be glorified. So let's lift up Jesus Christ. Let's not take Jesus Christ out of Christmas. Even, listen, and Hanukkah time has just just come to a full, uh, uh, end where they spent the last eight days and they were dedicating themselves back unto God. The Feast of Dedication, uh, the, the Feast of Lights, Hanukkah. Listen, even Jesus Christ celebrated that that, that particular time, if you look in John chapter 10, you will see him celebrating that in the winter time, going into the temple, celebrating the feast of dedication. So continue to keep Christ in Christmas. Continue to, to lift up Christ. Rededicate your life back to Christ. Give Christ time right here. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to study the word from this time to this time. I'm going to be praying for these people from this time to this time. Lord, I'm going to be witnessing to 
to people about you more. Father God, listen, I'm going to give my talent and my skills to this area over here for the building kingdom of God. Listen, God wants you to represent him. God wants you. So give him you at this time. Listen, give God his present of yourself. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we want you to know that we're going to do a word of prayer, that we're praying for you, our leaders, our churches, our church leaders. We're praying for those that's going through. We're praying for those that's in hospitals, in nursing home, residential care facility. We're praying for those that's lacking. We're praying for those that that's in high places and those that's in low places, those that's sleeping in palaces and those that's sleeping on the grass. We praying for all of your all situations and circumstances. As we praying for Israel, as we praying for Afghanistan, as we praying for Africa and Egypt, we praying for all areas that's at war today, all people that's in disastrous situations. We praying for the saved, the unsaved, the backslider. Listen, we praying for all of our children. We praying for all of our elders. We praying for all of our seniors. Listen, we praying right now for the land itself as we pray for our leaders of our land. Hallelujah. Father God, we so grateful and thankful. Lord, we so thankful that you call us blessed. We so th thankful that you said that we was wonderfully made. We're so grateful, Lord, that you call us heirs to the kingdom of God, that you call us your children, that you call us yours, Lord. We're so grateful for it. And, Lord, we know that we can be what you call us to be. You called us to be your witnesses. You call us that we supposed to do greater things that you have done. Lord, we're so grateful that you have called us and we can be exactly what you called us to be. And Lord, as we lay our situations and circumstances upon the throne of grace, as we come and lay our burdens down, Lord, we receive the rest that you release. We receive that rest, Lord, that you are able, Lord, that you have all things underneath your feet. Lord, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, we are so grateful that we can just lift you up now, that we can lift up your holy name that we can glorify your holy name. And we pray that you get all the glory through the situation and circumstance as your presence is being felt, as your hand is being seen, as your word is being spoken over it. Lord, we're so grateful and so thankful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, all right. We're so thankful for you all being here. And remember that Jesus loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye now.